The main focus in the plaza of the historical area is the Neo-Gothic Church Parroquia de San Miguel Archangel, across from El Jardin, which means the garden or park. The church was built in 1709 and had a modest design on its outside, but in 1880 to 1890, it was changed quite a bit and a new facade was created. San Miguel is known to many as an expat haven and it is a World Heritage Site. It's located in the far eastern part of the state of Guadalajara in the center highlands in Mexico. It is 170 miles from Mexico City, 53 miles from Querétaro, 60 miles from the state capital of Guadalajara. Its elevation is 6,200 feet. The town of San Miguel was founded in 1542. San Miguel attracts thousands of tourists and new residents from abroad every year. What a lot of people don't know is that at the beginning of the 20th century, the town was in danger of becoming a ghost town after an influenza pandemic. Gradually, it became the Baroque neoclassical colonia and was discovered by foreign artists who moved in began art and cultural institutes. This gave the town a reputation that began attracting more artists to come here. We are in one of the many beautiful plazas in San Miguel. This one is called Plaza de Soledad. There's Paulette. Spinning around still. It's rush hour in San Miguel. About three o'clock in the afternoon. There are many mercados in San Miguel. The one that you're looking at here is Mercado de Artesinias. Also attached to it is the Mercado Ignacio Ramirez. Um, here you'll find a lot of different types of artwork, as you can see here. It's a huge market. It, it spans about three streets. You go out of one market, cross the street, go into another market. Here you're looking at an entrance. Here where you see some alabrije work. Here is a lot of clothing, some silver work in there. Um, some more clothing, a lot of baskets and stuff that you kind of typically see in most markets. There's some jewelry, some more skulls, which you also see a lot of more alegrije. Uh, it's really a, a pretty nice market. is loaded with tons of coffee shops, restaurants, boutiques, and galleries. Not a lot of street vendors, but you can find them throughout the city. Here we found a cute little boutique with the suns, of course. Beautiful door. And me. Another quaint little shop that you can find all over. The streets are so colorful. I absolutely love them, and I always say I'm a woman of color can never have too much color in my opinion. Look at this, how beautiful. San Miguel is also known for its great weather, cost of living, although I think the prices are rising due to the growing number of Canadians and U.S. citizens flocking there to make San Miguel their retirement destination. San Miguel also has a low crime rate. There are many buses like this that run throughout the city. Uh, our cost with our Inapam card was four pesos. Uh, I think they're about maybe nine or ten pesos regularly. As you can see here, the streets are absolutely beautiful. And I can see why a lot of people relocate here because it, it's a beautiful town. 
There are a lot of taxis in San Miguel. Uber is also available, but in my personal experience, I found that once you ask for a ride, it takes drivers a long time to accept. Back in El Jardin, which is still made up for Christmas, even though this was after New Year's, they sold Paula's favorite ice cream here, Garamboya ice cream made from the red flower of a cactus. San Miguel has a lot of cobblestone streets, which makes it a little difficult to walk on sometimes. Uh, the sidewalks are also pretty narrow, leaving room for just one person at a time to walk on them. And many of the streets are one-way streets, as you can see here. It's not uncommon um, to find many, many of the one-way streets in town. There are some that are two-way, mostly on the main boulevard, and I don't know the name of it. Here you can see how narrow it is. These people can't even walk next to each other. Some streets in San Miguel can also be hilly, which would need to be considered for somebody uh, retiring in San Miguel that doesn't like climbing up and down hills all the time. What I personally love about San Miguel is the bright colors everywhere. The stone all over the buildings, the bougainvillea that drapes over the walls, um, so many plants which you know I love and just the color is just magnificent. I can see how tourists want to flock here. Well, the central area is beautiful, so is a lot of the rest of San Miguel. I would encourage people to walk a few blocks out and just check it out like we are here. There's Paulette with her giant bag. We're getting ready to enter the park, which you see here, uh, which I thought was just amazing. I haven't really seen it in any other YouTube videos, but it's a big park uh, with a lot of stuff, a lot of activities. A lot of places to, to sit and relax and enjoy the day. If I lived in San Miguel, I'd spend a lot of time in this park. I just thought it was paradise myself. What I liked was the paved um, paths that you had all through here, the trees, and of course, the plants. Lots of plants. They did a really nice job. In fact, coming up here, they have a recycling, and normally you see the recycling bin, this right here, um, but this one had the bottles in it. Usually it's only the caps, which was a surprise. outside of the park uh, as you can see still a beautiful cobblestone streets sidewalks a lot of greenery uh, as we found really throughout San Miguel uh, and still some narrow sidewalks and that kind of thing looking back into an iron gate into the park 
Uh, there were some really cool stone wall, stone buildings made uh, like what you see here. Just outstanding work. I can't imagine how long it must have taken to make those. Walking down the street, again, with all of the beautiful greenery. Uh, everywhere you look, there's just something to look at here. This is a street corner here, beautifully done, beautiful buildings. Nice color. Yeah, exactly, nice color. Another stone building. Uh, this is looked to be a newer development that was going in. Walking down yet another beautiful street. Uh, as you can see, some of the paint is deteriorating, but in some weird way for me, it added to the beauty of it. If any of you are wondering where your 1960s style of VW bug went to, uh, look at Mexico. They seem to all be winding up here. This hotel was absolutely beautiful. Even if you're not staying here, you gotta at least come in and check it out. Look at the grounds here as we pan around. A quick online check reveals that it's about 12,000 pesos a night to stay here. At this current time, that's about 600 US dollars. We couldn't go into any of the rooms, but from what we've read online and what we saw, it is a luxury hotel and fairly high standards, probably as the price per night would suggest. Uh, again, it is absolutely beautiful. Here we are now on the rooftop terrace of the Rosewood Hotel, which offers spectacular views of San Miguel. You don't need to be a guest of the hotel to be able to use the terrace and get a meal or, or a drink here and enjoy the view. The hotel is located in Zona Centro, not too far from the park that we had visited. We're looking back towards the center of town and the church. How many expats live in San Miguel, do you ask? Well, about 66,000 residents live in the city proper and about 175,000 in the outlying areas. And the total expat population is about 10% of that number. As we said, San Miguel is known for its Baroque Spanish architecture and, of course, its thriving art scene. Property prices in San Miguel have surged in recent years due to the influx of foreign buyers. Just told Mark somebody passed him that was taller than him. He's right there. Here Paulette and I are running back up the street. Yeah, not really. We we're way too old for that, but the streets away from the center are still beautiful and we highly recommend that you check these out as well. Instituto Allende is a visual art school in San Miguel. The Institute provides a range of courses and offers a BA in Visual Arts and an MA in Fine Arts in association with the University de Guanajuato. And it was opened in 1950. We highly recommend checking this institute out. There were a lot of artwork displayed, including paintings, sculptures. Uh, the grounds were amazing as well to look at. Uh, absolutely beautiful. 
As Mark and I were walking around town, we found this Hotel Real de Minas. Uh, beautiful <laughs> what they did with the trees here. They're all so unique in their own way. The building was very old with stone covered with vines. The courtyard was just magnificent. This is Tianguis de las Martes. It's an outside market. It's huge. As the name indicates, it's only on Tuesdays. Uh, there are a lot of vendors there, a lot of covered areas, a lot of food being served as you're looking at our lunch, which is actually pretty good. Gorditas. And here we are on the bus back to the city center. You don't see strays in Central, but you see them on the outskirts in San Miguel. This one happened to belong to someone and was on a leash. While San Miguel is beautiful, it's also important to note that there are areas like this well in the outlying areas of town. So all in all, Mark, how would you sum up San Miguel? Well, I thought it was a beautiful place. We'd been there a couple times before, but only for an afternoon, which really wasn't nearly enough time to, to take it all in and appreciate it for all of its beauty. This time we were there for a week, five days. Did I stand corrected? Five we're, days actually, house sitting. Yeah. We were yeah. there for a week all New Year's and then um, a few days after that. Uh, I see why people move there. It's a beautiful city. I mean, I totally get the attraction, especially if you're into uh, an artist, you know, if you're into arts or if you're an artist, it is the beautiful place to be. Yeah, you know, I found the weather to be pretty comparable to San Luis Potosi. Uh, is San Miguel for us? Mm, no, it's a nice place to visit and again I see the attraction for many people retiring there, but um, for Mark and I, you know, we're still happy with our choice. Yeah, yeah. Um, San Luis Potosi is the choice for us. Um, but, I mean, would you go back to San Miguel? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so would I. I mean, it's just a different experience, a very soft landing for those of you looking to come to Mexico. And as always, from the two travelers in Mexico, mwah, and Happy New Year's!